In this video, I'm going to introduce Laplace transforms, and I'll say something about uh, how they're used, and um, and also introduce the definition and how to calculate them. So Laplace transforms uh, play a huge role in the process of solving differential equations. The reason for that is, let's say you have a differential equation, let's say some second order differential equation like this one, where you have a non-homogeneous term, let's say some function f of t on the right hand side. So the Laplace transform is some kind of an operation you perform on both sides of this equation, and we usually denote it with a fancy script L. So you can take the Laplace transform of both sides of this equation, and what happens when you do that is this left-hand side here goes from being a differential equation to being just algebraic. And what that means is we no longer have to solve differential equations, we just have to solve an algebra problem in order to <clears throat> find the transform of the solution. And so what you end up with is something that we're going to denote as capital Y of S, and that is the transformed version of Y of T. And so the overall procedure in solving a differential equation if you're using Laplace transforms is to transform both sides of your equation to get an algebraic problem and then solve the algebraic problem using simpler techniques and that gives you y of s and that's capital Y here and then we carry out an inverse transform and for our purposes that will be uh, really just looking it up in a table uh, once we've established a few basic inverse transforms for the, the uh, most common appearing functions. And then from this, once we've inverted, we'll then be able to actually find y of t. So what, how do we define a Laplace transform to you know, m make it have this magic property that it turns differential equations into algebraic equations? So what we do is we write down the Laplace transform of some function, let's say y of t, is defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus s times t multiplied by, oops, by y of t dt. Now what we've done here is we've introduced a new variable s and that is the variable for the new function, capital Y of S, the Laplace transform of little y. So let's look at a couple examples to get an idea of how this transform process works. So let's say uh, we start with the example y of t is equal to some constant function c. So then the Laplace transform of the constant function c is going to be given by the integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus st multiplied by constant dt. And now we can calculate the antiderivative. This is an antiderivative with respect to t, so we have to divide by 1 over minus s e to the minus st, and now we evaluate from 0 to infinity. Oh, and then I have that c value, which I've not put in, so let me put it in the numerator here. So we have c over minus s, e to the minus st. Now this infinity up here, that really means that we're taking the limit as a goes to infinity of c over minus s e to the minus s t evaluated from 0 to a. Okay, well, there's a question now because a is going off to infinity. In order to be able to evaluate this, we have to make an assumption about uh, s. So as long as s is positive, we can say that the Laplace transform, actually let's rewrite that now, the Laplace transform, I'll now write it as y of s, capital Y of s, 
and this is for s values that are positive, this should be equal to uh, the limit as a goes to infinity of c over, and now remember that this a and 0 are being plugged into t, so we still have an s down here, but we put up here e to the minus s times a, and then subtract c over minus s e to the minus s times 0. So this whole term here becomes 1 multiplied by c over s, and the minus and minus sign combine to make a plus, and we get c over s, and I'll put that in front. So now we add to that the limit as a goes to infinity of c over minus s e to the minus s a. And as long as s is positive, which we're assuming temporarily, uh, then we know that with an, a large positive a value, this exponential is very small. So as a goes to infinity, this whole expression here will go to zero. So that means we have c over s for the Laplace transform when s is positive. What about when s is equal to zero? Well, when s is equal to zero, this step was already a problem. So we actually made an implicit assumption here when we divided by s that um, we could do that, which if s is equal to zero, we can't. So we have to go back to this stage here. For s equal to zero, y of s is actually equal to the integral from zero to infinity of, and now e to the minus zero, well, that just becomes one, and this is c dt. Now the integral under a constant from zero to infinity is infinity. So it's, in, it's not defined. And then if s is positive, or if s is negative, then we get this exact same expression as we had here, except now s is negative, so this is e to the positive quantity. And as that gets big, this also will be equal to infinity. So y of s in this case is also infinite. So y of s, which we defined as the Laplace transform of the constant function in this example, is equal to c over s for s positive and does not exist or is not defined for s less than or equal to zero. So that is one example of the transform of a constant. And in subsequent videos, I'll do a few more examples for more complicated functions.